1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 is a really tough verse. Yet she will be saved through childbearing. We remember that Paul wrote in the first century and he wrote with a certain mindset. And it's important for us to interpret from the first century into the 21st century and to understand something of the context of then and the context of now in order to make sense of this passage. So Paul had been speaking in 1 Timothy chapter 2 about how all people should get together and get on with the different cultures and the different peoples of the day. Ending in that conclusion in verse 8 that men should pray without anger or argument and then also about the ways that women should dress and behave and all sorts of things and about how they should learn in silence with full submission as Paul says. We know that keeping silent causes trouble. We know that the idea that some people should submit to others ends up with people taking advantage. And what Paul is doing here is describing what he would do, not necessarily prescribing the way that things ought to be in the church that Timothy runs. But in verse 13, Paul makes an interesting justification for his decision that women should keep silent. Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. In other passages, Paul talks about how men, Adam, was the one through whom sin entered the world. But in this case, he gives Eve the credit. But all of this actually comes back to the point that Paul was making in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. He was talking to this early church about the problem that they had with false teaching, with myths and endless genealogies that promote speculations rather than divine training known by faith. And the aim of all this instruction, love that comes from a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. If we go back to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, we can read what Paul says about how Jesus, born of a woman, born under the law, redeems those who are under the law. And think about how Jesus, born of a woman, comes to bring salvation. And we go back to another passage that would have been important to someone like Paul, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Genesis says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, so that the snake and the woman will become enemies between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The children of women will strike the head of the snake and destroy evil from the world. And at this time of Advent, we read that passage in hope because we know that that's one of the first passages we read in our uh, Christmas um, carol service of lessons and carols. And so this idea that women will be saved through childbearing reflects on that prophecy, but also reflects overcoming deceit and overcoming deceit and turning to the pure and true simple gospel of Jesus' love enables people to continue in faith and love and holiness with modesty. And so we pray, Lord, help us to continue in faith and love and holiness with modesty. Help us to do away with speculation and myth and not to fool for the tricks of the day, but to only listen to the plain and simple truth of your love for each and every one of us and of the fact that you have defeated evil and risen again. Lord, at this time as the world, as South Africa remembers 16 days of activism against women and child abuse, We pray that passages like this would not be wrongly used and misconstrued to subjugate women and to oppress them, but that our church and our people would become wise, learning to use the scriptures that were written in the first century appropriately and properly in the 21st century. Amen.